I'd like to take a moment to talk to you all about a little old lady named Genkai. Doesn't she just look like a sweet old grandma that would bake you cookies before school? Pfft, yeah, except this old lady would tell you to shove the cookies up your own ass while she cuts down several demons and then steals your video game console to play for herself. Genkai takes that old mentor trope and enhances it in ways that you would never expect. For starters, Genkai is introduced as a cranky old hermit who knew that her time was coming in the near future and wanted her knowledge and skills to live on beyond her, even if that meant in the hands of somebody who would use them for evil. Quite different from the good-willed nature wise philosopher type. Not to mention that she has absolutely no tolerance for stupidity or snarkiness, which is why her relationship with the protagonist Yusuke is so much fun to watch. Genkai is so anti-bullshit and Yusuke is so naturally rebellious, but somehow these two opposite types of personalities causes a magnetism between the two characters and they develop a very strong mother-son type dynamic. But despite this, let's call it moral ambiguity within Genkai, she ultimately does favor making more good-natured calls when it is at all possible. It's not that Genkai is good or evil, but somewhere in the middle where the lines are blurred and it depends on the situation at hand. A perfect yin and yang. And understanding that each situation specifically deserves its own attention and its own answer. She's been around long enough to know that the world is not black and white. During the Dark Tournament arc, we come to learn more about her and her infamous Spirit Wave technique that has many facets attached to it. The most notable one involves an ability for her body to transform itself back to her younger state, effectively de-aging her about 35 to 40 years. But why does this happen, and how does it reflect the character of who Genkai is? Activating the Spirit Wave, or Raiko Hadoken as it's pronounced in the Japanese, which translates to Spirit Light Surge Fist Style, Genkai channels her spirit energy to engulf her entire body. Spirit energy is kind of like chi. I know at times Yu Yu Hakusho separates spirit energy from life energy, but you can kind of think of it as your soul or spirit's power, the essence that makes up the you inside the flesh of the body. Translating this to real world ideas, chi can be considered an amalgamation of all the energy within you, the electricity, magnetism, willpower, and focus within your very being. Something that as time goes on becomes more and more scientific, and I'll tell you why I bring that up in just a moment. Enhancing all of this encompassing spirit energy, Genkai's body begins to regress in age. Every cell in her body is replicating how it felt when they were at their most powerful. It's a physical representation of her spirit energy showcasing itself on the outside. By tapping into this power, every part of her reverts to its strongest point. Because most people hit their physical peak in their 20s or 30s, this is where Genkai's body goes and remains here for the duration of her using this power. But it does take a toll within her. We have a limited amount of chi or spirit energy that we can use as it needs to be recharged and replenished. So Genkai can use it to power up and destroy a mountain or enact healing on others, but afterwards she is exhausted. But Genkai has also been training and working hard her entire life, and acting the spirit wave is her prized possession for the discipline and achievements that she's made. So passing it along to someone else isn't just teaching them the spirit wave, but literally giving it to somebody else focusing the majority of her power into an orb that can then be absorbed into another person's body. And this is why learning the spirit wave needed to come from Genkai herself. She spent her life acquiring something that could only be given and not fully taught. I'm gonna go off on a tangent here, but there's a book by Joe Dispenza called Becoming Supernatural. It can be classified as a self-help or spiritual book, whatever you wanna call it. But while reading some of its key ideas within the book, I couldn't help but be reminded of Yu Yu Hakusho, Genkai, and the Spirit Wave, and let me tell you what I mean. So I can't summarize the entire book by any means, but just the gist of what's presented is, Joe has been researching the human mind, brain waves, and how to reprogram your thought patterns. So if you think and react emotionally to a particular thing that's happened in your life, your physical body doesn't differentiate between the past and the present. Meaning that when you think about that horrible traumatic thing that happened to you in your past, your body has a physical reaction as, as if it's still happening, even though it isn't. And that's the negative side of things. But your body has a similar response when you connect to thought patterns of positivity and thoughts of the future. So whatever emotion is running you, your body will have the appropriate response. 
and he did research on brain waves and patterns and all this fancy stuff that I can't begin to describe, but he found clear evidence of people who connected to the positive attributes actually becoming physically healthier. They made themselves believe that they were healing and thus activated their cells to speed up the healing process. This is the power of the mind, but not just of the mind, but the power of the entire body. And I remembered how Genkai and her body turning younger by the spirit wave, and in a way it's the same concept. Genkai focuses herself on what it felt like to be in her most powerful state, and her body transforms into that. Now, in real life, you probably won't be able to make yourself look decades younger by thinking happy thoughts, but there is scientific evidence to suggest that the way that you think and view yourself directly correlates into the health of your physicality. Genkai transferring the spirit wave orb to Yusuke relates to the idea that this isn't something that is easily taught, and it's an extremely difficult knowledge that must be given and absorbed into us fully. But accepting and absorbing it within your very being is a process that feels like it could kill us. Yusuke had to experience deep, incredible inner pain in order to process the power of the spirit orb. It was a test of will and desire. How bad do you want this? What are you willing to go through to have it? Because I guarantee nobody comes to realizations such as this without experiencing horrible pain in one's life, mentally and physically. Why would one look for a way to control their own body and heal and grow stronger if not having been subjected to feeling weak? Without challenge, there can be no growth. Without sacrifice, we would have nothing. I think that's a quote from Tyler Durden, but it still applies here to Yu Yu Hakusho. So what the hell am I even talking about? Look, maybe I look way too much into this anime shit, and I like to believe that there are profound messages in between the epic battles. Genkai made hard choices in life. She experienced darkness and sacrifice. She is not a perfect person. She admits that she is no saint. She's not the hero. She's just someone who did what she could to obtain a greater power, and if she got the opportunity to help somebody along the way, sure she would, but she wasn't a superhero. It was never about that. It was about finding out what the limits of the human power has to offer, what are we capable of, and what can we really do when we apply body, mind, and soul to our potential. But just the same, since the spirit wave orb must be given, it was always her choice all along on whether she would fully give it away. And I think it took that mother-son dynamic for Genkai to find the value in taking care of somebody and guiding them down their own path. A path very different than her own. And that's what she wanted for him. She didn't want him to lead the same life that she did. She wanted him to lead his life his own way, just as a good parent wants for their child. Don't make my mistakes, but please make mistakes. Have them be your own and become who you were meant to be. You must suffer your own pain. You must overcome it on your own. And as she states, the energy will absorb, but only if you have the will to endure it. Reflect that statement on your own life. Your own pain that you are going through. How much it hurts. Endure that shit. To hit that spiritual renewal and to gain that new power, you must understand suffering first. The fact that she felt enough empathy for his pain that she even attempted to remove the orb at one point shows a lot about her character and her attachment to Yusuke, but Yusuke refused to let her. He had to experience his own pain, and if it were anyone else, if it were any other part earlier in the series, Genkai might have not cared so much. But Yusuke was what she needed to revitalize her life. The spirit wave is what Yusuke needed to understand that state of mind that he was ignorant to. And the entire idea of one's body following the will of the mind is one that has always existed in Eastern philosophy, but every day gains more credibility in actual grounded science. At the end of the day, Genkai needed to accept her choices throughout life, both good and bad, and to come to a neutral ground in passing on all that she was to the next generation, to Yusuke, and trusting him to carry on. It wasn't a Genkai redemption, it was an old woman remembering and feeling the strength and power from her youth, understanding that it was still a part of her, and applying it in a way to better the future. She passes on to Yusuke that he must value these choices and what it means to be human that every decision he makes is bleeding into the next one, that every choice affects not only him, but the people that surround him. 
Genkai spent the latter half of her life alone and isolated. She did morally gray things, and she was burdened with her choices. This push, but at the same time this care that she had for Yusuke, one imagines if it would be the same if Genkai had her own child. If, and this isn't what this video is about, but if Tagoro remained human. If they had had that wonderful life that they never could have had. If the secrets of the spirit wave could have been applied to some imaginary child of theirs. But that didn't happen, as both Genkai and Tagoro had to live with the choices that they made. But Tagoro's pain comes much later. Genkai's was consistent with the age in isolation, and perhaps a brat like Yusuke could remind an old woman of those distant days and spark a new way to apply the lessons to a new, brighter world. Genkai brought a lot of things to Yu Yu Hakusho, but I think most importantly, it's how she accepts and understands the choices that we make in life and how important they really are. Whether they're good or whether they're bad, they're something that you have to live with and acknowledge. And I feel like her mentorship towards Yusuke went a long way in shaping who he was as a person and also allowed him to forge his own path. But then again, these could all just be the crazy ramblings of somebody that looks a little bit too deeply into things that maybe shouldn't be looked this deeply into. I don't know. Tell me what you guys think. I want to know in the comments below what your thoughts are about Genkai, the spirit wave technique, and how she awoke Yusuke's potential by showing him the reality of what happened within her own life and letting him know that through suffering, there can be power, and through darkness, there can always be light. So thanks for watching this video, guys. I really do appreciate it. Give it a like, comment down below. Let me know what you think of my crazy ramblings. Um, until next time, I'll talk to you in the next video.